Trouble don't last always. Amen. I'm so glad. It may come, but I'm glad to see it go. I'm so glad to know that even in my trouble, there is a God that is there to protect me, who said he would never leave me or forsake me. I'm so glad. And he never said you wasn't going to have some trouble now. He said you were going to have some pain. But he did say he would be there with you when you go through that pain. Go through that trouble. Go through those trials. It's the day that we call the Lord's Day. That we come to worship him in spirit and in truth. And regardless to how we feel, it's not about that. It's, it's, a, it's about knowing that God is a God above our feelings. He's a consistent consistent God. So are you glad today to be in the number just one more time? One more day that you can see a smile from a brother or a sister. Amen. One more day that you can feel God all around you. One more day where he gave you just the activities of your limbs and the activity of your mind and, and, and he woke you up this morning. One more day. So I was glad when he said unto me, church, let us go in the house of the Lord. Regardless to how the body is aching today and I'm feeling, I'm glad to know you and to know him. Are you happy to be here today? Yeah. Are you happy to be here today? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. If you don't mind, as we come to our call to worship, standing all over the building, we're going to read Psalms 150. Psalms 150, 1 through 6. And then we will have a prayer of invocation. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you need me to wait, say wait. wait. All right, I'm going to hold on. <laughs> they, they, you know, they, they used to say, we, we just holding, we're still holding on. Sometimes you got to wait on that thing. Yeah. Amen. But while we're waiting for some, you can prepare as you look at it, though. Amen. amen. Psalms 150, the King James Version, is the reading for today's word. It's the last one. It's the last one of this great book. It says to his people, the people of God, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and with the harp. Praise him with the tremble and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and the organ. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. He's been good to us. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You know, we might have already had homecoming. We're still in revival. We're still in revival. So we want him to continue reviving us. Bow with me for a word of prayer as we go to God with this prayer of invocation. Lord, as the piano plays, as the instruments are strong, you are the choir director. You put songs in our hearts, God, when we're in trouble. You put songs in our mind, God, when we don't know what to say. There's a hymn of preparation. God, order our steps today. 
when we don't know which way to go God coming down highways and byways of life order our steps God that we look to the hills where cometh our help for all our help does come from the Lord God as we know that many have come last week but they're gone on back home you said God where two or three are gathered together in your name you'll be in the midst God be with us today at First New Hope Baptist Church be with us God because the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few but God we know that you said in your word that there's going to be a harvest for those who keep their hands to the plow so God those in the hospital God let them know that you're there God those who are working on this day God let them know that you're still on the job God those who are coming in these doors God on their way God make their way safe and those who are not able to make it out God bless them so they know you are with them and God those who are in the hospital and the prison bars God locking down but they're not locked in because you are a way maker God make a way out of no way for them who are in shackles God who are homeless and hungry God we know you can do it because you did it for us you can do it for them and God as we look at our worship today worship God not just our children our, our husbands and our wives but we worship you today we worship you because you brought their gifts of love to us God bless us God to put you first and God we come here not for show or fashion we come here not because of the numbers we come here because you have brought us from a mighty long way God bless us individually and God bless us collectively for God as we celebrate 152 years we know that you were the one that was in the beginning you're the one in here right now and you'll be the one in the end because you are the alpha and you are the omega so God bless us right now God as we close this petition of prayer we ask you never to leave our presence but keep on loving us keep on holding us and keep on providing for us God as our provider we give you the praise the glory and the honor in Jesus name I pray amen amen and amen amen to God blessing me right now oh right now the Lord is blessing me right now oh right now he woke me up this morning and started me on my way the Lord is blessing me right now oh right now the Lord is blessing me right now Send me right now, oh right now, he woke me up this morning and started me on my 
Father God, we come to you this morning with thankful hearts, Lord. Yes. Thankful yes. for you allowing us to come out to the church one more time. Yes. I want to thank you, Lord, for sending us with a pastor, yes. Pastor Reed, Lord. He's a preaching and teaching pastor, but most of all, he loves his congregation, yes. and we love him. I want to thank you for sending First Lady Reed, yes. because we know what a big support she is to him, and bless her, Lord, today, yes. no matter where she may be. Yes. I want to thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have a wonderful homecoming last week. Lord, it was special. It was special to have so many family and friends here. I was very blessed to have my nephew, Reverend Curtis Austin, bring us the message, Lord. It's a blessing to see someone that you 
knew before they were born, reared as a child, go through challenges and come out on the other side, Lord. So we want to bless him. Thank you. Continue to bless his family. Lord, we want to thank you for allowing us to see the church full of people. And it wasn't for a wedding or a funeral, Lord. We were together, Lord. It was a blessing. We had people here from families and had family reunions. And it's nice to know that there were even some people that weren't able to come because they were at family reunions. But it's good to be back, to be able to be with your family and friends and fellowship and serve the Lord together, Lord. Lord, I want to say that we are all going through something. They say you're either going into a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out. But I'm asking you for a special hedge of protection around First New Hope in our congregation, Lord. Lord, like I told the pastor, we're watching and praying because we have been going through something. And I'm going to call a few names, not all, Lord, but I want to ask a special blessing first over my husband, Lord. Lord Jesus, he's been through a lot. He's not feeling well today, Lord, but he's here today to continue the blessing. Now I want to move over to digging Melvin Thompson, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for sparing his life. Special blessing over his wife, Sister Geneva. She stepped out on faith. She said she's going to come here and work here with our church, church family. Well, she's already family anyway, Lord, but bless her as she supports her husband, Lord. Then we want to move on over to Sister Digging this Mary Minor, Lord. Please bless her. Bless her, Lord. You know, it's something different when you have people. Some people don't want to come to church. Church. But I've been in the situation she's been in where you've been at home and want to come. Sometimes all you can do is sit there and cry. Yeah. But Lord, we know yeah. you have a special blessing over her, Lord, because she's been standing for what's right. Yeah. Her family looks up to her, Lord, but we're asking you to bless that, her family. Yeah. And when she comes back, let them come back in numbers, Lord, yeah. because she can show them what God can bring you through. Yeah. Lord, as we move through this revival season, we ask a special blessing over our pastor, traveling mercies over him and First Lady as we travel to another church, Lord, to fellowship. Lord, give him strength. Give him the words to say. Keep him safe, Lord Jesus. Because, you know, he was present everywhere. And now I just want to move on a little bit further. Sorry to go so long, but just move over to the schoolhouse, Lord. Please protect our babies, Lord, as they go into schools. Keep them safe, Jesus. If there's a time you can send your child to school, you didn't have to worry about it because the teacher was a Christian. She looked out for your child. But, Lord, you know, we know we put you first and everything will be all right. Lord, continue to bless us because we know, we're smart enough to know that the devil never takes a vacation. But he's not going to win. We're not warned against flesh and blood. We know who the enemy is, Lord Jesus. And we have the word. We know how to stop him, Lord. The word, Lord. We put you first. We believe in you, Lord. We ask you for all your blessings. And Lord, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Amen. Can't do nothing 
been without you And I can't do nothing for you Everything I give to you You give it back to me What shall I render For all of your love In my darkest hour You brighten up my day What shall I when I am lonely, you with me all the way. What shall I render for all of your love? When I was lost in sin, you died in Calvary. What shall I render? The reason why you died, it was to set me free. What shall I render for all of your love? Dear Lord, I can't do nothing without you. for Brother Powell. Thank God for him. Amen. And Sister Powell right beside him. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the choir. We thank God for you. I, 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 I'm happy to see him. Just, he's doing his thing. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for you guys. We love you and we, we praise God for you. If you have your Bibles, your phones, or your tablets, if you would Go to the book of Habakkuk. You can back in from Zephaniah. You can back in this a minor prophet towards the end of the Old Testament. There's a word from a living Savior that we need to hear. And I heard it in what Sister Faith was saying. I heard it in the songs of how we, we, we do have trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And so we might as well acknowledge that we have it because we, while we have trouble, we still have God. Amen. The book of Habakkuk, you'll find it in the Minor Prophets towards the end. Zephaniah, you can come back to your left and it'll be right there for you, that third chapter. The, the 15th through the 19th will be the reading. I'm going to read the English Standard Version. The English Standard Version. So we can get a, a clear understanding of this text. Amen. You have it? Say amen. amen. Need me to wait? Amen. It's good to share the word too with your neighbor too. So that's good. The book of Habakkuk, the minor prophet, a prophet just like Jeremiah, says in the third chapter, the 15th verse, you trample the seas with your horses, the surging of the mighty waters. I hear and my body trembles. My lip quivers at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones. My legs tremble beneath me. Yet, I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon people who invade us. 
though the fig tree shall not blossom, nor fruit be on the vine, the produce of the olives fail, and the fields yield no fruit. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stall. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He maketh my feet like the deer's. He maketh me to tread on the high place. And then he says to the choir master with strings instrument. Just for a moment, I'd like to talk about Abaka as you go to your seats and talk about how he had joy in a time of trouble. So what I want to share with you today is a word about how you need to be determined in a dark day. Determined in a dark day. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, God, for those who are praying and not losing sight that you are still a conqueror and the victor of our lives. We're praying, God, that even when we're weak, you're still strong. We're praying, God, that when the wicked try to beat us down, God, you find a way to make us a bridge over troubled water. So God, broken in the inside, looking good on the outside, but God, I'm so grateful that you start your work on the inside of our lives and then you move out and let us walk with you, talk with you, and have peace with you. So God, order my steps right now. Hide me behind this sacred desk, God, where there is little of me and more of you. God, right now, the determination for dark days, help us to see that it may be dark, but you are light in a dark place. God, right now, we decrease as you increase. We sit down as you stand up in us. Use my words, God, that come out of my lips. Touch God so that it's clear and that it's words given by you. God, I thank you for the time I've spent praying with you and working on this word, God, for all week, God. For this revival is not for all of just Baptists. It's for First New Hope, too. We still know, God, that you're omnipresent. You're everywhere. So, God, we thank you, God, for a word from a living Savior. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, ushers, for looking beautiful and handsome. Thank you. I want to thank personally our technology ministry under the leadership of Deacon Rodney White for what they did last week. I want to thank them personally for that. We are where we are because of technology and because there were some faithful people that says we can move out of these walls and we'll make it happen. And we need to thank God for that because we are seen in places we've never been seen before. Let me acknowledge that God who is my light and my salvation, we acknowledge him as the author and finisher of our faith. We acknowledge the leadership of this house of 152 years. We acknowledge the clergy, the leaders here with me, my co-laborers in the vineyard. We acknowledge the hospitality of a church that just loves people. We acknowledge my wife, my helpmate, who had to work today. Thank you for the prayer, Sister Faith, for she loves you like you love her. We acknowledge the children. Because without children, we don't have a future. But we acknowledge most of all that God is still in control. You've heard the reading from the scripture of Habakkuk. You've heard the words. 
and for a subject I'd like to use determination for a dark day. We all have some dark days there, Sister Shaw. Sometimes we, we don't want to admit it, but we have some dark days. Beloved, when I retired from Homeland Security last June, June 30th, 2022, one thing I learned from that organization that applies to the church is they had a way of starting to prepare for disaster relief. They came up with a website initially called disaster.gov. Then they changed the Deacon Broadus to readiness.gov which appeared because of the actions from the enemy on September 11th, 2001. It also applied when Katrina hit the shores of the New Orleans city. And they found out that preparation of the civilian population is critical for survival of people. Brothers and sisters, it's simple that the United States government wanted its citizens to prepare for potential either man-made or disasters from natural causes. And because of that, we as the one of the spiritual world should prepare for disasters because we live in a fallen world and we live around fallen people because there's going to be times that no matter how much you pray times no matter how much you you praise God times no matter how many hymns you sing that you can say disaster is going to come at your doorstep that's why I believe and I know the Bible is right that John 16 and 33 says these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in this world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world I believe David backs that statement up there sister Linda when he wrote Psalms 34 and 19 when he says many are the affliction of the righteous but the Lord delivers them out of them all we have to have a predetermined disposition of dark days that's coming around us that even though they're here we will rejoice in the Lord can I help somebody today when dark days come around your doorsteps it's there when you notice that children are now being shot in school and, and parents don't have anything they can do when they send their children to school it's a dark day my brothers and sisters when people no longer respect the church anymore they don't they used to not come on the yards and smoke but now they smoke right on the patio if you let them it's a dark day when politicians want your vote but then when you need to hear them call out and help you you find nobody there to represent you it's a dark day when people don't want to work anymore all they want to do is panhandle so that they can weep and beg for money but they don't know that God said if a man does not work he does not eat we need to know that it's a dark day but there's also a God of light see Habakkuk was telling us in this text he's writing to get a prophetic review of how God uses tools of correction to bring the city and the people of Judah back to him in right standing that lets us know that God knows us we're not Judah we're his other people his other children but he'll send some things to correct us sometimes and it's because he wants us to be back 
in right standing. See, the issue that Habakkuk was facing in the text, he's at a place that he realized that the people of God of Judah had forgotten what Moses had said. Moses had told them that you will live in houses that you didn't build. He had told them that you're going to eat grapes in vineyards that you don't even plant. He had told them not to forget in the God of your salvation because God did it for them, he'll do it for you. See, Habakkuk had two problems in this text that I want to bring your mind around. Wrap your mind around this problem. First, God's solution on how to fix this problem, getting his people to start acting right, was not what Habakkuk thought it should be. But second, he had the problem with the solution that God was going to send, and, and, and he said, how are you going to bring back holiness when some unholy people are going to rule over your people? Can I, can I tell you and preach it like I feel it? Can I tell you what he was thinking that I wasn't there, but I know how he was feeling because I've done it myself. See, see, in other words, Habakkuk was saying, you got a, a son you want to get saved, but you don't want to get him arrested and go to jail in order to get him back on your knees. Can I tell you that he was telling them you want your body healed, but you don't want to exercise and have those surgeries in order to get a better physical turnaround. Can I tell you that you might want your marriage saved, but yet you don't want to apologize and, create and look at what you've created in a marriage and you wonder why there's problems in the home. Can I tell you that we as a nation want this to be fixed, but we don't want to get on our knees and pray to a God that's always available to us. See, I stop by to tell you that we can want the schools to get right, but unless you want to go vote, you can't talk about what the school's doing. See, we got to realize that we want other people to do it, but you don't want to do nothing yourself. But in order to get from there, you got to get up, you got to walk, you got to show somebody that I'm willing to fight this fight on earth. Habakkuk and God are talking in this text. They're starting to have a conversation going back and forth. If you read the whole third chapter, you'll see that he's nervous because ungodly people is starting to want to come on the scene. And he knows that how can ungodly people correct godly people? But God was letting him know that I can do anything from the outside of my will to bring those who are in my will to my will. You see, he was letting Habakkuk know, telling him that although it's going to get dark and the Babylonians are coming, they're going to mess up everything in and around Israel. And the people of God are going to go into bondage. But Habakkuk was letting them know that God will be there with you while you go through. What was he showing them and what does history show us? It shows us that Habakkuk is letting them know after 70 years of the Babylonians trampling on the first temple and destroying it, after the second temple is finished in 586 B.C. to 516 B.C., God was still with them. And isn't it funny, church, how God gives a word to a name of a man named Habakkuk, which means to hold on or to embrace. So in the midst of the days that were dark, he wanted them to hold on and to embrace the trials and tribulation because he was with them. See, God used this man to give a positive disposition in the midst of some negative circumstances. Here is what Habakkuk decided to do. He decided to take the attention off the dark days around him. And he put it on the divine source that was above him. Because he stopped looking around at what was at his feet. And he started looking up to the hills. I can imagine that positive in the midst of negative doesn't always look good. Positive in the midst of negative doesn't always feel good. But positive in the midst of God always is good.
good. <laughs> See, I, I, I wasn't there, but I wanted to share this with you. So when things get difficult in your life, Habakkuk is letting us know in his disposition, which started in Habakkuk 17 and 18, he says these words to us as he looks at how dark it really is. He says, the figs aren't blossoming. He says, the fruit on the vine, the grapes, are not on the vine. He said, the produce of the olives with the olive oil are not yielding it. And he says, there's no food in the fields. And he says, there's no animals being produced from the flocks. And he says, that, that, that through it all, you should have still some joy. Through it all, God of your salvation, if he did it before, he'll do it again. He's saying to us, through it all, trust in God. It may be dark right now, but God is a heart fixer. It may be painful right now, but God is a mind regulator. It may be hard sometimes, but God will make it easier if you keep trusting in him. So what are the points that he lays out? There's three points and then I'll be out your way. I want to tell you a few things about this man named Abaka that applies to us in the text, Sister Shaw. You see, in the 17th verse, he lets us know you got to acknowledge your position. You got to acknowledge you're in trouble. He says there, I, I, I said it, but I want to keep going back to this. Though the fig trees do not blossom, nor the fruit on the vine, the produce of the olives fail, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stall. That's bad news. But recognize there's a trouble in your life. He's saying to us all, what you're doing is not working. He's saying, you read your Bible and you're not feeling it. He's saying, you've been praying and you're not seeing no growth. He's saying, Bible study is not moving you. But he's saying to you, know where you're at and accept it. We all need to acknowledge, brothers and sisters, that we've had some good days. But we need to acknowledge we've had some bad days. We need to acknowledge that it hasn't always been up. It's at times it has been down. We have to acknowledge that the trees are supposed to produce some fruit on the vine. But when you don't see it, what do you do? Do you stop praying or do you hold on to it? unchanging hands? When you don't see your way through and it's brown down there and you know it's not going to do anything, will you walk by the fig tree and curse it or will you pray on it and love it? See, Habakkuk was in a agriculture society. I want to make it plain that if all you have is what you can put your hands to and it's failing, that's a dark day. You see, he's in an environment of the economy. It's based on what he can produce and what he can maintain the cross of his hands. Yet nothing is growing on his farm. This is a song when you read the whole thing. For in the struggle of the song, he tells the choir master in that 19th verse and string instrument that it's a song of struggle. Habakkuk is doing his best. He's planning. He's weeding. He's milking. But nothing is working. Ooh, that's a dark day. Just because... You go to church with a smile on your face. Doesn't mean everything is working out for your good. Just because you got a little running water does not mean you don't remember when you had an outhouse in the back house when you had to go sit down and do it out there. Just because you 
you're not struggling like you used to does not mean that all your bills are always paid on time because God knows that we struggle with life but in our struggle the deliverance is accepting that you know that your living will not be in vain sometimes God wants you to see that if you do you love things more than you love him the source of everything sometimes God wants you to know do you like the comfortable ride of that car more than the one that gave you the car and the job to get that car sometimes God wants you to know that it's not the crops in the field but the one who sends the rain to the field that makes all the difference in your life you are not where you are because you're such a good farmer you're not where you are because you you you've been so good you look so good you've been so good you are so smart it's because you serve a God that looks beyond your faults and seen to your needs you gotta acknowledge that if it had not been for God on your side where would you be so you need to acknowledge your position with God because when you ask me how I'm doing I need to tell you that every day is not Sunday and every day I don't feel good I can't always say that I'm blessed and highly favored I need to tell you that I am climbing up a rough side of the mountain I need to tell you that it's not my mother it's not my father but it's me oh Lord standing in the need of prayer I need to tell you that my children don't always act right my wife don't always act right I don't even act right all the time but God loves me in spite of who I am See, you need to acknowledge, my brothers and sisters, that you don't always be look up, but sometimes you do have your head bowed down. You see, you need to acknowledge that in that 17th. But you also need to acknowledge that through your struggles, you need to confirm your praise. That's what the 18th verse says. Confirm your praise. See, you forget that when I read that little word says, yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the Lord for my salvation. See, I realize that you had some pain sometimes, but yet you trusted God. I realize that you had your head hurting sometimes with a, with a headache, but yet you trust in God. I realize that you didn't always want to come to church, but glory be to God. He brought you on your way, and when you came in, you didn't feel good, but when you left out, you felt better. Yet, I will trust in the Lord. Don't miss your praise don't miss your praise too many of us are looking at fields that are barren thinking how can we fix these fields I want to tell you that you're not smart enough you're not you're not good enough you don't have enough experience but you need to realize that God knows everything you need if you trust in God God will bring away out of no way I need to let somebody know that it will be dark like Habakkuk said but get your praise on in the midst of your storm God said that he'll say to the wind be still in the time of the wind Habakkuk found out he found out if God is doing one thing and you try to do another you just get in the way of God and God will back away but if you get your hands up and throw them up in the air and say God I yield to your will I yield to your way you'll find out you'll be alright coming out because you can't pull while God is pulling you can't tie my shoes when it's jacked up I'm pulling this way you pulling that way it creates a tighter knot but when you let God untie it you can walk with him you can talk with them you can tell him all about your trouble you can tell him God I thank you for wiping the tears from my eyes I thank you God for being a bridge over trouble I thank you God for being my wheel in the middle of the wheel I thank you for being my rose of Sharon I thank you for being a lover of my soul what a mighty God like I just don't care God was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I think or I can imagine thank you Habakkuk thank you God you're not always going to have figs to 
that's going to blossom. You're not always going to have grapes on the vine. You're not always going to have olives to make you oil. But every now and then, you got to know that if you just hold on, God's going to make you through. He's going to help you get through. That's why you got to praise Him in season, out of season, while you're going through and while you're coming out. You got to praise Him when you feel like it. Praise Him when you don't feel like it. Praise Him when He's good. Praise Him when it's bad. But God's good. All the time and all the time God is good anybody here knows this God that sits high but does look low anybody knows this God that made a way for you when you didn't know where to go say yes when you got a good God say yes when he's been in your bridge over troubled water say thank you thank you thank you God for being my God Y'all sit down now. Y'all got me getting nervous now. You got me getting nervous. You act like we know the same God. I thank God for the God in me loves the God in you. I thank for knowing the same God that works in all of us. Woo. See, we need to not deny the truth. The truth is we do have some trials and tribulation. That's on the front end. But when you throw that yet in there, on the back end, God said, I'll clean it up. We need to tell the truth today that it's comparing contrast in that 18th verse. He says, between nothing, there is something. We need to let somebody know that it was bad on the front end. But when I got to the back end, God was still in control. You see, it was not something I wanted to go through, but I'm better now because I went through it. I thank God for stretching me, pulling me, turning me, changing me, and loving me through all of what I went through. See, don't forget that yet is your dash and all you go through in your life. That yet is a dash that takes you from the cradle to the grave. That yet is the dash that takes you when you give your life to Christ as you go up higher and higher in the Lord. Ooh. So you got to rejoice in this Lord. I will rejoice and be glad. Say it. Ooh. Because God's character has been consistent. It's not how you feel. But I will rejoice. Because when I look back over my life and all he's done for me my soul still cries out thank you God for saving me Ooh, I will rejoice although there's no grapes on the vine I don't know how I'm going to make it some days because I have no money in my pocket but I'm going to still rejoice that he's my provider and he's going to provide for me so you got to acknowledge your position but also confirm your praise in God as you go through but the third thing I want to leave you with today is you need to acclaim that he is your provider he is your provider when you don't see it he's still your provider when you don't look good and you don't understand he's still your provider the 19th verse says this to us God the life the, the Lord is my strength he maketh my feet to be like the deers in other words he says like hind feet he maketh me to tread on my high places places that's more than one that's a lot that's like the mountains can you help me today notice in the text Habakkuk has taken all the emphasis my brothers and sisters off of him and he's put it back on his provider Deacon Broadus I wasn't there but I believe he knew that if God did it before he can do it again I'm in the right church now I hear y'all talking back to me see see he remembered that God was the one that saved him God was the one that promoted him and God was his salvation he had experienced 
that God was good before and God was still good. When you have a God that never fails, you don't need no fig trees what he thought about. When you have a God that never fails, you don't need figs. You need to keep your faith. When you have a, a God that doesn't fail, you don't need to worry about all the grace because you worry about your grace. When you have a God that hasn't failed, you're not worried about sheep anymore. You're worried about the shepherd over the sheep. When you have a God that hasn't failed, you're not worried about food because you eat the bread of life. The word. Habakkuk is speaking on what is empty right now. But he said it's always, and it's not going to always be empty, the sister need him. <laughs> I, I may not have it in my pocket right now, but I'm trusting God that he will provide. <laughs> because he knew that God was a provider. So he could shout when there were brown veins uh, from the vines. He could shout because he served a God that renews things. Morning by morning, new mercies I seek. He could shout because he was standing, Sister Rebecca, on the promises of God. He could shout, dear heaven, he could shout. He could shout that God was good to you when you couldn't walk. But he got you out of a paralyzed state and got you to say, take up your bed and walk. See, you know this God because he's been your provider. You acknowledge your position. You confirm your praise. And then you can acclaim your provider. So as I get ready to sit down, as the helicopter's about to go into the hangar, as I'm starting to run down the runway, I'm getting excited because God has been good to me. Because even when there was dried up life in my life, God was still the water that was a well that kept on giving. See, there were times when I wanted to throw in the towel. There was times when I was nowhere fresh to be a man of God. God, but God can take a sinner like Stevenson Leonard Reed and make him whole again. God can make a way out of no way and renew my strength. I believe that Isaiah said it in 40 and 31. He said that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I believe every now and then you got to find out that you're nothing without the Lord. I believe every now and then you got to know that you got a closet full of skeletons but God can wipe away all your skeletons. I believe that every now and then that if you've got God on your side where would you be? Habakkuk paints a picture of a mountain deer that does not have to worry about his predators. He said he's not going to outrun his predator. He said the predator is going to run fast. But you need to know that the deer is going to climb high. You see, every now and then, the deer has a hook foot. But he's got another tool in the back. He's got a claw that goes around the side. That means the deer won't slip. As it's climbing higher, well, we are all uh, climbing Jacob. Jacob's ladder, higher and a higher, and every round, it's going to take you a little higher, and your enemies of your debt will be left behind, the enemies of friends that stab you in your back will be left behind, the enemies of those on your job trying to hurt you will be standing behind, as you climb up higher in the Lord, he won't let you slip, he won't let you fall, he don't need to run your predators. You need to look up to the hills where cometh your help. For all your help cometh from the Lord. Say yes. If God's been good, say yeah. If he's been your provider, say yes. If he's your wheel in the middle of the wheel, do you love him? Don't fool me now. Has he been good to you? Don't fool me now. Are you trusting him? Don't fool me now. Say yeah. We got to 
aside with a preposition that God is our strength in a time of trouble. But I know we go through. You look good when you come in, when you smile. We even know how to smile when we're not feeling good. But just know God is still good. And although it's dark, that's all right. He never said it was going to be easy. But he said, I don't believe he brought you this far to leave you. We're standing all over the building. Every time I think about what I'm praying and what I'm doing, it humbles me to know how far he's brought me in my life. And, and, and you know, I don't know everything about you and you don't know everything about me. But we still serve the same God that knows everything about us. And through it all, he still loves us and he's keeping us. So if this is your day and you want God to clean you up, raise your hand. I'm raising mine. He's not finished with me yet. And I hope he's not finished with you. So if that's your hand is up, Bow with me for a word of prayer. Father, we need you. The road is tough. The hills get rough, God. And they even get hard to climb. But God, we started out a long time ago. But there's nothing that's holding me back in my mind right now. We need you, God. We need you. Injuries, God. We need you. Broken hearts, God. We haven't gotten over. God, we need to get through the storm of life. So, God, as you see my hands, God, that's our way of acknowledging we need you. And, God, even while we're crying sometimes, we're praying, God, that you don't. Don't give up on us. But God, keep us when we can't keep ourselves. Keep our marriages intact. Help our children and our grandchildren, God. Help our friends and our neighbors. God, if we've done anything unlike you, God, of sin of omission and sin of commission, God, forgive us right now. God, have mercy. And God, love us through our mess. And God, we'll be so grateful, God, to thank you for how you brought us, how you kept us, and how you love us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Give an honor to Father God, the leader of our lives. Now is the time and service that everyone can participate. In God's word, the Bible, it states to bring one-tenth of what he has given you to the storehouse. We ask that if you have been moved by the service today, consider making a donation to First New Hope Baptist Church. Please click on the Give button and proceed as directed to make a donation. Have a blessed day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you.